Hello and welcome back to the Scottish Football Show special, uh, powered by the Rangers Rabble podcast. It was a, a sore night uh, in the Johan Cruyff Arena, Holland, or the Netherlands, should we say, for Scotland nil. Uh, joining me for this one is Connor. Connor, how are we doing? Hi, no bad, I Needless to say, my mood was a bit better before that. Um, that's a that's a sore, sore one to take. It really is. Um, but you know, um, we'll we'll dissect it. We'll you know try and pick out any positives that we can and um, sort of see where we go. But there's there's no doubting that we need to we need to give better accounts to ourselves in 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 these games for the full ninety minutes. Um, Instead of just playing for, you know, a half or an hour, you know, you've got to, you know, we, we have to be a lot better, I think. Yeah, listen, uh, we, you, as you say, we will dissect it, we will go through it. Delighted to see some people have joined us in the comments as well, so welcome along. Do like, subscribe and tell a pal. Um, we will pull up some some comments if they're sensible as we go through. Um, aye, so listen, you say positives. We start off the night in a, in a flashy new strip that we'll wear into the Euros. Um and to be fair, we start on the front foot. We look really comfortable uh, in control, uh, and and Holland looked like almost their wayside. Yeah, we did. We did. Um, I thought, you know, we did get off to that good start. I was saying before, I wanted us to get off to a confident start and and get at them, um, and not allow them to get too comfortable and get into the rhythm. Um, we done that really well. Um, I thought we we knocked them off their usual game as well at times you know we kind of restricted them to a lot of long balls um throughout the, the large bulk of that first half and <clears throat> you know that that was a good thing because that's not the type of team now they like to get it on the on the ground and, and play some good football and we done well to restrict them and actually we were doing a lot of that you know a lot of good um one two touch passing um going on and, and, and good link up play um and and we were looking you know the, the threatening side um you know, in the, in the majority of the first half, and uh, you know, listen, <clears throat> in these kind of games, if if we'd scored, whilst we were on top, whilst we were playing well, um, we we could have been having a totally different conversation tonight because we did, you know, we we did play well in the first half, and I see there a comment saying about the score line flattering the Dutch. I, I would agree that certainly four 0 doesn't fairly reflect the, the full ninety minutes. Of, of you know of football that was played there, um, I don't think by any stretch of imagination it was a a four 0 type of performance for the Dutch, nor was it the type of performance that merited us getting beat by that score line. Um, that being said, you know we we did for large spells look in control, look comfortable. Um, you know that first until we conceded any anything that was being thrown at us, we dealt with well. Um, and and you know you've got to say that I think that's that was a real positive and you were feeling confident that at that point that we could maybe try and kick on and go and, and take something for this game. Yeah, listen, and I think it's important to say that you know in the in the start that we made press was good. We looked really balanced and 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 as a, as a sort of a, in, a, in a structure that seemed to be working. Uh, we do get some early chances uh, and probably the best of those. Uh, falls to Ryan Christie. It's a great ball and actually in good work on the right-hand side from, from Billy Gilmore. Mm-hmm. Christie gets his head to it. Really, really good save and, and Shanklin just can't you know get alive to it first before Virgil van Dijk clears. Yeah, listen, it's a, it's a tough one because it's you know it doesn't fall absolutely perfectly for, for, for Shanklin. Um, I mean, you know, first thing to say is it's a, it's a, a real good save from Flecken in the, the first instance to, to tip it onto the bar. Because um, it was a decent chance, uh, a good, a good enough header that um, you know another day might have might have fell in, and it just comes out. And I think it's it's maybe just slightly um, gone behind Shankland and, and caught him off guard a little bit, um, which is why he's not been able to to really get on the end of it. Because obviously it's the kind of one where when it comes off the bar, if he just gets a touch on it in the right direction, it, it's a goal because the keeper's obviously you know. Out of position, and the, the, you know you've got the whole goal to aim for in that instance. So I think uh, you know it, it's an an unlucky 
an unlucky one to, to say the least. Um, it would have been nice for it to to drop. Unfortunately, it didn't. Um, but that was a real big moment, and and that that's what it's about. You know, moments and in, in, in games like this, particularly, you don't, you know, in these kind of games, and you're you're coming up against the kind of quality that the Dutch do possess, and, and you have to say that because. But as dominant as we were, and you know that was, you know, we definitely created the best chance to game to that point. Um, you know, you always are weary that um, <clears throat> when you don't get that little bit of the rub of the green, you know the quality that can come at you after that. So yeah, it was it, it was unlucky, I think, for for both Christie and Shankland um, not to be able to, you know, one of them to be able to have, have put it away. Seem to get a lot of joy. Out wide, uh, Andy Robertson uh, in particular was getting the better of Frimpong. Uh, just his final delivery wasn't probably at the levels that you'd expect for the Liverpool captain. No, it wasn't, and it was it was a surprise because you know you, you just expect so much more from Andy Robertson, and, and we know the quality of delivery that he can produce. Um, you know, he really can. He, he he's got a wonder left foot at times when he does whip it in, and I just think for whatever reason. It just didn't quite feel right. Um, I mean, you've seen that one where he sort of, you know, he, he does well. He's tenacious, shrugs from Pong off it, keeps it in, and, and really creates that chance for himself. Um, and you're, you're expecting that to be just floated in. I mean, Lauren Shankland, I think it was, was standing free as a bird at the back post. And if he had just picked out one of his, his trademark crosses that we're so used to, um, and got that position. Shanklin's in for a free header, um, and he, he just—it was just slightly off it tonight. It was, you know, there was a number of them that were just a bit over hit for me, um, and then conversely, maybe by trying to, you know, sort of overcompensate the other way to try and get it right, he's then under hit one or two and gone too close to the goalkeeper and just not really found um, that piece of quality that he's 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 produced in the past. Um, so he, he did. He had a. A frustrating night when it comes to his his delivery for sure. And then we, we we talk about you know the Dutch not really creating an awful lot. Um, we defended you know quite admirably up until a point, and then you look like we're going to get into the, the half time level, and they get a strike from distance, which you know no taking it away from the the Milan boy. It's a, it's a wonderful wonderful hit. Um, but just you know, you're, you're kicking yourself somewhat there that no one's got out to him. He's had a load of space to to maraud into before he's let let loose. It has listen, no takeaway for the, the finish. Uh, Feeling does it's a you know it's a, a top top class um, finish for him. Um, you know it's just he's managed to whip it straight into the corner and nothing Angus Gunn can do about it. I mean, if you're being critical, we really should have been looking to try and close him down and not give him that kind of space because again I said I touched on it earlier this is the quality that you're up against and that kind of giving players like that that kind of space and time you know to look up pick your picky spot and then tee it up is is not really what you know they they will score more of those than they won't um with that quality and it was just you know a, an absolutely brilliant goal. Um <clears throat> what I will say is I, I do think that uh, I felt as if the, the Dutch were taking the mickey a bit by playing all Wang Zine after they scored. I don't know what that was all about. Um, you know, I mean, honestly, playing against us and four times they scored, four times they're playing all Wang Zine. I mean, all we needed was Dumfries to score and that really would have just rubbed it in. Um, <laughs> but, you know, I think apart from that, it's, it's, a, it's a wonderful goal and, and, and poor Angus Gunn, he, do, he does his best. Um, I think Sometimes camera angles can deceive you because when you see the angle from behind the goal, there's part of you thinking, "Well, oh, I don't know, could he, could he have got to that?" Well, he this, is, this is my next question because um, I, I kind of it was maybe his position or the way he shuffles across. I don't, I, I don't know. Something doesn't look right when you you're watching it. You're thinking, "Could he, could he be doing better there?" Listen, it's 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 tough um, because in a lot of ways, when he's shifting over there to get that, um, it's kind of already passed him in some ways you know it, it's so precise and it's right into the corner and the challenge he's got you know uh, as any goalkeeper does when you're trying to produce a save for a situation with that you've, you've you almost got half an eye on the fact that the post is right there and he, he's trying to avoid obviously um doing himself a, a bad 
injury potentially by plattering into the post as well and trying to save it. Um, I think, yeah, if he had maybe if his starting position had been just a little bit better, because I do think he started, you know, I don't think he started centrally as I would have maybe liked him to. I think he was maybe just a little bit too far, um, you know, to his left hand side, maybe by a step or two, and that just allows that extra bit of. Um, you know, space, uh, extra yardage he's got to then try and make up to get on it. So I think if you're being ultra critical, certainly you, you could maybe have done better. But at, at the end of the day, I, I don't think as many goalkeepers would have would have saved that. Um, you know, just with the the sheer pace that was on it and the fact that it is, you know, drilled dead into the corner. Those are the hardest for any goalkeeper to try and save. Well, you said before the game that, you know, when you were picking your, your, your 23 man squad, that Angus Gunn is definitely your number one for the Euros. And I want to pull up Sid's comment Gordon's better than Gunn. Keith Drummond has been ultra critical. I don't know if you can see his comment. Uh, he said his, his mother's better than Gunn. Um, <laughs> do you feel like the scatter gun slightly out, or were you shocked at having taken four keepers that we didn't make a change at half time? Uh, yeah. It's a tough one. Listen, I, I think, you know, I think Sid's right in that, you know, Craig Gordon overall certainly, I think, is probably a better goalkeeper than than, than Angus Gunn. Um, you know, you look at the Kariri side, but you've also got to remember that Angus Gunn is still a young enough player. He's still coming into it, and I think he has he has proven himself to be a very very solid goalkeeper for us. I think tonight, you know wasn't really his night. And to be fair to him, other than the first one where you can maybe debate, there's nothing he can do about the other three goals. You know, even if Kate Gordon's in, he's not saving any of the other three goals. Um because they're not they're not mistakes from from, from the goalkeeper, uh, from his point of view. Um I mean look, in terms of the change at half time, yeah, I, I could have seen him do it. I think it's not an uncommon thing in friendly games in particular to do that, you know, to try and give each player a bit of time, and, and had we come out a half the, in the second half, and you know Craig Gordon was between the sticks as Ander Clark, I wouldn't have had any complaints because that's you know it's the nature of friendly games. That's what you do. Um, but obviously, um, at that point, I don't think he had really done anything wrong to necessarily merit getting taken off, other than just purely from a, a tactical experimental point of view. And, and Steve Clark obviously didn't particularly fancy doing that, although I will say I can absolutely see him changing it uh, for the Northern Ireland game on Tuesday. Um, I think you might well see uh, Craig Gordon or, or more likely Xander Clark coming into that game um, because there's no point taking four goalkeepers and not, you know, making a change. Yeah, so I can see him do that, absolutely. Uh, <clears throat> but as I say, in this one, I'm not so sure I'd have been changing it at half-time personally if I was Steve Clark. Just some immediate uh, reaction from, from the players themselves. Um, John McGinn speaking to, to via play says, embarrassing. So much to take from the game, but obviously the scoreline is an embarrassing one for us. We had good chances and one of them has got to go in. You can say you've had good chances, but we've got to be more streetwise. And when it goes to 2-0, shut up, shop a little bit more. Uh, we're going into a tournament where goal difference matters so much. I think over the piece, we can take positives in the sense we didn't feel that the Netherlands were a million miles from us. But those moments towards the end of the game are certainly not what we look uh, of with many positives. We're, a bad, we're on a bad run of results at the moment. It's happened to us too many times and we can't let those bad habits creep back in. That's mm. quite concerning from McGinn, is it not? Very, very much so. Um, and and, and he, he's right in a lot of ways, I think, certainly. Listen, we are on a bad run. I heard the commentator say that it's the first time uh, in 16 years, you know, since 2008, that we went, we went six games consecutively without a win, um, you know. So it's it's the worst piece of form we've been on in a long time. Now, the caveat to that, of course, is you have to put things in context and look at the teams that we've played. And certainly, <clears throat> while you can make your your reasonings for England and France in particular and the qualities they've got, you know, I said before we come on. You cannot go into these games and get hammered constantly. You just can't. You know, that's not acceptable. And I don't care what anybody wants to say, you know, about where we are in terms of 
as a country and our you know qualities and our you know, where we're lacking. I think we're certainly too good on paper of a country to be getting scalped, you know, and conceding four or five goals every time we come up against these teams. And and he's right when he says about goal difference in, in the Euros, it's massive. Because bear in mind, if you finish third in the Euros, you know, if you're one of the, the, the four, I think it is, best third place teams, you'll get into the knockout stages. Yeah. And a lot of that comes down to goal difference, purely because usually what tends to happen is there's a couple of teams who maybe win one game and get three points, and then you'll have a number of teams sitting on three points, and then it's just about whose goal difference is the best. So we've got to be mindful of that. Um, with without doubt, you know, you can't collapse in games. And he, he's right as well that when we go two nothing down, you need to calm it down. You need to just pause, take a breath, get a bit of control back in the game, shut the shop. You know, just shut up at the back and. You know, if you can create a wee opportunity to get yourself a goal back in it and make it nervy, great. But ultimately, don't don't collapse. Don't get yourself in a situation where you're walking away tonight, um, <clears throat> having been resoundingly beat by a, a Dutch side who, for the most part of that game, were bang average at best. You'd, you'd have to and say. To be fair to the Dutch as well, they haven't broke sweat, have they? They've not had to work mm. for it, Connor. No, they haven't. They have not. Um, and that's probably the biggest frustration, you know. We, under Steve Clark, one of the things that he certainly has prided us on has been making us tough to break down and not conceding loads of goals. And, you know, we didn't concede a lot of goals during the qualifying campaign there. Um, well, you've got to say, and um, we have tried to pride ourselves on that. And in recent games, that's just completely fallen out the window. Um, and... You know, you've, you've got to, you know, you can't, you can't just play well for, uh, you know, an hour, 65 minutes. Okay, the chances that we did have, we didn't take. And then just fall apart and not react. And listen, there's, there's question marks certainly over the changes that the manager made, whether they were the, the correct decisions or not. I think certainly, um, you know, I, I think you could massively ask the question about whether John Souter really should have been brought on for Kieran Tierney. Um, you know, Jack Hendry, should he have seen out the full 90 minutes, given that he didn't have a particularly great game? Um, those are all legitimate questions because they can throw the rhythm as well with the team. But well, we'll, come, we'll come on to the, the substitutions in a moment. I just want to come back to you because you, you made a good point, I think, at this, on the on the build-up actually about the the momentum and, and taking that into the tournament. And But also you also said about you know qualifying sort of early doors and how that may have hampered us slightly. And I have to say, I do agree with that. I think since we've qualified, not saying the wheels have fallen off, but there's been a slight change. I don't feel that siege mentality anymore. I don't feel, it almost feels like we've made it. And I think we need to be better than that if we're going to progress at the Euros. You know, we turned up to the last Euros thinking, it's great to be here. Mm. I don't want to go to Germany and just play a part. I want us to go there and actually make that next step into been the first um, Scotland side to get out of a group? Uh, listen, 100%. And this this is this group of players that we've got just now, this era that we're in, they have a massive opportunity at their fingertips. They have something that no other Scotland team that qualified for these tournaments in the past has. And that is that they do have the opportunity to qualify for a group without having to actually finish you know, first or second in the group, you know, win one game, that can be enough. Northern Ireland done it a couple of years ago. They won one game and it got them into the knockout stages. For us, that's the progression. We've been now to the tournament in 20, well, it was the Euros, Euro 2020, but it was actually 21 because of COVID. Um, we've been there now. We've had that experience. It didn't go the way we'd have liked it to. You know, we had two games at hand and that ultimately we were very in um, and we had a very commendable point that we managed to take um, at Wembley and rightly so, got a lot of plaudits for that but actually you can draw some parallels between that game and, and the game tonight and as much as with a lot of chances to score in that game at Wembley, didn't take any of them, um, you know, you could argue they felt the wrong players tonight, similar and I think we have got to strive to be better go and achieve the things that we've not done before, yeah it was great 
couple of years ago we got into the first tournament and since 1998. There was a whole generation of, uh, of people who had grown up and never actually had the opportunity to see Scotland in a major tournament, myself being one of them because I was only three in 98, so I didn't remember it. Um, so, you know, it was phenomenal to, to have that achievement and that piece of history there. But now, how do you progress for that? How do you do better this time round than you've done the last time round? Because the real witness test about whether we are actually better now than what we were in 2021 is if we can go and be more competitive in the Euros. Can we go and win a game? And listen, we're in a group, you know, Switzerland, Hungary, Germany, OK, Germany, opening game, you know, in a whole tournament in Germany. It doesn't bode well, but Hungary and Switzerland are certainly... I would argue winnable games, um, but they're only winnable if we have the right mentality. And we need to stop this idea that as soon as we've qualified, that's it. We can down tools. We've done it. You remember as well. We've done it after we qualified for Euro twenty twenty. Bear in mind, we we won on penalties against Serbia. Then we had we had two Nations League games to come up after that, where we only needed a point to go and win that group. We lost both games. It was. Dreadful performances against Israel again, um, you know, and we, we ultimately failed to do what we should have done and put the ice, the, the you know, the, the cherry in the cake by by winning our Nations League group as well. So that's the mentality side we've got to change and we've got to be better at. But, ha- but there, there, have you not just answered your own question in the sense that it hasn't changed because it's still there from this campaign in the sense that we've qualified again and and we're not then pushing on. We're just saying that's that's enough. That'll do us. Well, yeah, I mean, look, that 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 comes down to um, number one, the players themselves, and, and understanding that you can't just chuck in the towel once you've qualified, but also the manager as well. You know, clearly we haven't learned that lesson for the last time, and Steve Clark has been very good at saying, you know, well, we'll learn lessons for this. You know, this will be a good learning curve for this young group of players. You're only a young group of players learning lessons for so long. You know, eventually it gets to the point where if you've not learned by now, when will you? I mean, I, I look at my honest opinion is the template for us should be Wales under Chris Coleman. That should be the template we should be looking to go and replicate and do because there was a side much like us hadn't qualified for a tournament in a long, long time, got themselves into a, 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 into a tournament, the Euros in 2016, but had the mentality, and okay, Gareth Bale, Aaron Ramsey, clearly top quality players, but we've got top quality players. We've got Champions League winners in our midst in terms of Andy Robertson, um, you know, and I think... Billy Gilmore, he's won a Champions League. Yeah, Billy Gilmore as well, of course. Um, you know, and he's... They, they kicked on, and when they went into that tournament, they made it all the way to semi-finals, Wales. Now, I'm not saying that necessarily we should be doing that, but the fact that they were able to do that with a squad that, in terms of quality, out with Bale and Ramsey, pretty much identical to us. And they've done that because of that determination, that fight, that spirit that they don't give up. They always have that chip on their shoulder and keep motoring on. That's what we need to do. Because it's taken Wales to three or four tournaments now over the last number of years. And obviously they had a terrific result last night, which puts them within touching distance of getting into the Euros as well. So... We, that that's the template for me for, for Scotland to look at because that's the parallel. Wales, Scotland were roughly similar size countries, so we'll have a similar size and quality of pool to you know in, in terms of pool of players to pick from. We've got to do that. And people will question whether they think Stevie Clark is the right man to do that. Um, and I said before on the, the build up, you know, he's got credit in the bank, the SFA won't sack him. But certainly if we go into this Euros and we we, we lose all our games, we feel we win any game and we just crash out, you know, we a whimper, having been on the run of form we're on, he'll be under severe pressure at that point. Absolutely, well, um, just to come back to the game itself, we, we were talking briefly before McGinn came in uh, about the, the, the first goal, we got into half-time almost sucker punched, it felt like, it felt like, you know, it was a real body blow. However, we come out the trap second half, we have some early chances I think McTominay has one, McGinn has one, Shanley mm. gets a nibble as well, and then Christie gets another headed opportunity. McGinn floats it in nicely, and he's just got to get it on target. Yeah, 100%. You know, the first 
Oh, he's, he's stopped by a good safety keeper. The second one, he's got to do better with. Um, you know, it's a great ball into him. And he's, as you say, he's just got to get that on target. Make the keeper work for it. Make the keeper make a save again. Because as he's seen with the first I'll let you come back in there uh, in a minute. I'm just pulling up some Will Connors sorting out his, his internet. There's some reaction as well from uh, Robbo. He said, you can't come away to these big teams and play the way we did. We have to take heart from the 60, 70 minutes, but the last 20 minutes is how is not how we want to play. Uh, the fact that we walked off that pitch 4-0 is unbelievable. We can't keep doing this. Going into get going into our old ways against the big teams, there is no way we can play like that because people look at that result and think this is very one sided. You go one 0 down to a wonderful strike, but we didn't panic. Start the second half extremely well. Had some great chances at this level. It's all about putting the ball in the back of the net. Lads can miss chances, but we can't. Uh, but we can't do as open up and uh, as we did. It's a collective thing. All of us uh, can change that and sort it out. So again, similar to along the lines of. John McGinn, the 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 captain, they're worrying that Scotland are falling into their old ways, and maybe questions about the mentalities we've touched on. Certainly, um, there is going to be a, a a real sort of, I imagine, a, an inside interrogation in that dressing room at the moment. People digging each other out, and a few home truths being told. Well, you'd like to think so. I mean, you know, the, the trouble is, it isn't the first time that, that this has happened. Why haven't why haven't we learned that lesson to not do that from France or from England? Because those were games that, for a period of time, we were in those games. You know, England in particular, majority of the first half, we were very much in that game. Okay, England had most of the ball, but we were doing okay, keeping ourselves in it, creating one or two moments when when the, when the ball felt it is, and then we conceded one goal and the floodgates opened up. Um, you know, as quick as it, and again, it's 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 the one-two sucker punch that we're allowing too often as well against England. You know, towards the end of the first half, England go and score, they go one up. Two or three minutes later, it's two nothing. You know, because we're conceding goals, like we concede one bang. Two minutes later, there's another. Tonight was another example. The third and fourth goals come, I think, within about two minutes of each other. You know, ninety seconds, two minutes. It's not good enough. You can't do that. Um, and it was too easy, and even even after that, you know, we'll talk about it, how it was flattering. It could have been five now, because even after that, they get they got in again. And you, you just think, when are you when are we going to learn that lesson? When you're playing big teams like this, they do have the quality to hurt you, and you can hang about all you want in the game, no, no, one no, and it's tight, and you're you're, you're in it. But when you're missing guilt edged opportunities, like the one that we'll, we'll come on to, which I think is probably the biggest miss for Lauren Shankland, and then you're conceding silly, silly goals. I don't know what what has happened to Robert's camera there. Um, he's maybe taking his shirt off, folks, I don't know. I um, was. Uh, <laughs> um, then that, that, to me, those conversations should have already happened. We should have already been reflecting that, and we should have come into this game and, sh- and, and treated this game as much as a friendly as the opportunity to show We'd learned the lessons for the bruising defeats that we had at the hands of France and England. We didn't do that. So my problem is, are we going to do it? Because let's be clear, the next game up's Northern Ireland on Tuesday. Now I tell you, we should be winning that game because we are clearly better than Northern Ireland. Um, we'll have and a lot more. As well, I don't think you know. Yeah. Well, exactly. Um, but again, it's another game where if we go about it the way we did tonight and don't take our chances, there's nothing to say that Northern Ireland can't go and nick a goal or two. You know, so realistically, the next opportunity for us to show we've learned our lessons against an really big team probably will now come against Germany. Um, You know, possibly, I don't know if there's maybe the Nations League games before them to play. I don't know, maybe Portugal, but something has to give and eventually the, the penny has to drop. Now, I don't know if that's maybe a case that the players need to have those conversations. The manager maybe needs to look at is that defensive setup, is that system the best way one to use against the bigger teams? Do you maybe need to shift it and change it a bit? Um, you know, because whenever Stevie Cart was the Kilmarnock manager, you know, and he would come up against Rangers and Celtic, he never ever played as open as that ever. 
against Rangers and Celtic, it was always stuffy and hard to 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 you know to get round and to to go and get goals. You were never handed goals on a plate. Um so that's that's what we need to try and get back to in these these big games and, and keep keep yourself in it and then take your moments when they come. Yeah, Blue Horizon saying there Clark was experimenting tonight, but I don't think he was necessarily experimenting with the back line. The pers- that was personnel that you could see starting uh, mm-hmm. against Germany. Um, you know, j- just in terms of the the, the goal thing, because I don't want to dwell too much on on the negative. I would like to pick up and maybe finish the the, the pod on on some positivity. But um, they are defensive mistakes. The first one, John mm-hmm. Sutter's just on at the park. Ryan Porter seems to ball watch and pull himself out of position and then from there it's just an absolute you know horror show yeah i mean yeah <laughs> it's, it's like you say horror show is probably the correct uh, phraseology to use there um I, I, yeah, it's it's extraordinary to me that you can play the way we did for the first hour of that game defend the way we did more more over um and then concede the goals we did, and then chances. I just oh, Lauren Shanklin will be having nightmares tonight, won't he? Um, what a huge no one more than me wanted him to put that in the in the in the top bin, and, and you can I feel like he maybe took too long with it. Yeah, maybe, maybe I think you know the chance falls to him brilliantly. We, we had been doing great, that. great work to, to get to create yeah. the chance actually you know the press uh, yeah. against we, had, we had been doing that all night we had been pressing them high up the park all night getting into their faces trying to work a, a mistake out of them we finally did we finally get that break of the ball and I don't know because I, I, I was trying to look on the replay and, and, and try and think that it was this like bobble when he went to hit it that's caused it to go as high as that because it doesn't. there's no reason for it to hit it that high I think Boy Horizon's right. He's probably he's tried to hit it too hard when all he needs to do, and he'll know this better than anybody because he's how many times he's done it for hearts. He just needs to open up his foot and just place that around the goalkeeper, you know, and 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 pop that in the back of the net. That that's a goal that for hearts in the in the league, 99 times out of 100, Lauren Shankland is going to score that opportunity. No question about it. But tonight, I don't know if it's the pressure or the weight of the expectation that was on him because of the form he's in and the fact he's getting this massive opportunity to, to start the game tonight and, and to go and show himself and he's just not, you know, set himself for it. But it's a massive moment because at that time as well, it's still 1-0. So if he scores that, you go one each. All of a sudden, there's a different dynamic. And all of a sudden, we've played well enough. We've got ourselves back in it the home crowd would have started to feel a bit nervy because we've just equalised. And then you can maybe try and put pressure on trying to get a second. So it's a massive moment. And, you know, I, I, I really question, are we going to get as many big moments like that when we go to the Euros, when we play Germany, for example? Are we going to get that many big opportunities to take? I would suggest probably not. So we have to get better at taking them. Um Again, no, I I don't want to be overly critical of Lauren Shanklin because I still do believe that he is the best striker that we have available and I think he will come good for us. Um, he certainly showed tonight that he can play in that team. 100%. He showed he can play in the team, yeah. I, I would have liked the, um, a bit more delivery to go his way. I don't think he got the service at times that, that he really needed. You know, we mentioned earlier about Andy Robertson's delivery at times um, and it wasn't just him you know he didn't seem to get a lot of real good chances for his way albeit with the exception of that big one that he should score um, so I would like to have seen that well, there's no question about it but you know, to be fair by no means was he the only one who failed to take big moments in, in the game today because you have to say even after that we had a couple of real good chances you had John McGinn and another great piece of football him and uh, Nathan Patterson I think it was linked up really well to open up the space and how many times have you seen John McGinn score that goal, you know, where he sort of just leans in, uses that bit of strength he's got in the old backside to brush the defender off and then just set himself and curl it into the corner. He's done it so many times. It looked like he put too much on it, didn't he? 
Oh, he did, I, I, he's, he knew it himself. As soon as it left his boot, he was raging. Aye, he's, he's totally overcompensated for it, and it's just gone well way to the mark. Um, I just want, want to bring you some um, some comments, actually, from, from Ronald Koeman. He, yeah. he said, you know, we know we can create a, a lot of good chances. During the first hour, the Scottish team were the better team. Uh, they created more chances to score. It was a little bit unbelievable that they didn't score because they had so many chances. Um, we knew before that Scotland would fight. They're a really aggressive team of good players like John McGinn, who played very well tonight. Um, so even the, the Dutch manager there sort of saying, you know, Scotland should have got on the goal, uh, should have got on the, the score sheet. Yeah, and he, he's right. You know, uh, I think uh, you you'll hear very similar for Stevie Clark. He'll he'll absolutely feel the same. The the fact there's one thing that we lost that game for nothing, which flattered them. fact, we didn't score is remarkable, really, when you consider those chances. Um, you know, we, we spoke with Shank and the McGinn there with their ones, Chris the earlier in the game. Even after that, you'd Scott McTominay with a header um, in the box. And, and again, just so uncharacteristic because he was on such a good run of form. I think he'd scored as many goals in qualifying as Kylian Mbappe. And we know how much he's going to go uh, and, and, and get in, in the summer at Real Madrid. You know, so it's just crazy that, that, that something seems to have changed, whether that's the fact that, the, you know, the, the defeats have taken their toll or that the complacency's crept in, something seems to change, and they need to switch it off really quickly to get back on track for these European uh, championships. Oh, well, yeah, 100% they do. And this is the thing, you know, yes, defeats and not getting results, they can take a toll on you if, if you know, and things aren't going your way and, and, and it continues that way, but it's your responsibility to stop the rot. Now, <clears throat> as I say, that opportunity will come um, on Tuesday. Thankfully, it's one of those ones where it's not the final game of an international camp and you've got a couple of days uh, until you play again so you don't have a you know which can happen you don't have months to sit and stew in it um, that's the opportunity to stop the rot and finally get a win on the board um, I mean listen the two draws we got I, I don't think it was a bad thing to draw in Georgia Georgia's a tough place to go for us in particular we've struggled there um, a plenty over the years and again look obviously they're a side we should be beaten. We did beat them at Hamden. We really should have been beating them in Tbilisi, but ultimately we didn't. Um, but again, the draw there wasn't terrible. I think we all kind of accepted. I mean, okay, that's we'll just move on. And then obviously Norway at Hamden again, you know, a game that was there for the winning, no doubt about it. There was plenty of chances in that game to win it as well. But ultimately, another one where you sort of accept the draw is not terrible results. But... You have to stop the rot somewhere, otherwise it seeps in further and further. And the longer you go, the harder it becomes to get that win. So by any means necessary, get a win on Tuesday. See, even if we have to win ugly and it's one nothing, be a 94th minute goal at the end. Although I don't think it will go that way. That's all you need sometimes. Just any kind of spark, any kind of win to get you back in the right track can help massively. And that's what we're desperate for now is to break that duct and go and get uh, a win on the board but we're only going to do it if we're more clinical and if we're smarter at, at the back um and and in terms of the way that we, we we seem to be chucking goals away right now we'll come on to tuesday shortly as well and i, and I want to talk about the wider picture in terms of the, the nation league and, and what that might look like after the the euros but Performances that I, I was impressed with one man in particular was, was Billy Gilmore. Uh, I don't know if anyone's seen the, the Our Billy um, documentary that the Scottish uh, men's national team have put out um, a couple of weeks ago. It's really, really good if you can get at it. It's, it's a good watch. But he seems to really be stating a claim for you know a first name on the team sheet at the minute. And, and I was really shocked when he came off. You mentioned Kieran Tierney coming off. I felt that the, the, the whole complexion of the game changed when Gilmore was, was omitted from the game. Yeah, I would have to agree with that. I, I think he, he, he did have a, a real good influence in the game, Billy Gilmore, when he was on. He was positive. Um, he was he was really aggressive and in, in, in the faces of the Dutch, and I like that. And I think when he came off, we just we lost that. Um, and you know, nothing against Lewis Ferguson, but I just don't I don't think he added anything when he came on um at all. And I know there's a lot of people who are massive fans of Lewis Ferguson who, you know, are are keen for him to be playing more games and, and, and starting games. I think there was a lot of people thought it might have started tonight, but you know, clearly um 
for whatever reason tonight wasn't meant to be his night because he just didn't do much. And I think it shows you that Gilmore, I think, is much further ahead of Lewis Ferguson right now. And I think I was going to say, I think it was a bit of a reality check for us as fans, mm -hmm. even though. Lewis Ferguson is, is went on an upward trajectory. He's doing really well in Italy, and none of us thought is he would be doing as well as he is. But Billy Gilmore is just streets ahead of what, everything we have in that midfield at the moment. He is, he looks like a player that could grace any side on the continent, never mind their own. Oh, absolutely. You know, and there's no get question about that. I think um, if, if Billy Gilmore, would, you know, if you see. If he was any other national nationality, he'd be knocking on their doors as well. I think if he'd, you know, maybe with exception England because Southgate plays the favourites game, but I think um, you know, he he is leaps and bounds ahead, and there's a reason he plays in the top league in the world as well. And you can't 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 get away from that. You know, he's playing in the Premier League, um, and he's shown it time and again. And I have no doubt that at some point he'll get a, a big move again. Um, you know. Oh, you know, didn't work out from at Chelsea, but I can absolutely see another you know, team coming in from whether it be, um, you know, a, a Manchester United, an Arsenal. Um, I think Arsenal might not be a bad fit for him, but just in terms of the style of play they like to play, I think that would suit him really, really nicely. Um, you know, so he's he's clearly bounds ahead, and he's somebody who I think keep going this way has to be a nailed on starter when we get to to Munich in in the summer. There's well, no reaction yet from, from Steve Clark. If that does come in, well, we're still on air. I will bring it to you. Um, okay, I did want to touch just on on uh, the Nations League as a, as a wider um, topic, Connor, because Stuart um, Johnson, uh, you know, podcast friend, um, he has said that, oh, you're choking there, I'll let you get a wee drink. He said, you know, it, it could be a worry in the sense that when we played the bigger sides, We've got absolutely hee-haw to show for it. You know, we're up against the likes of Portugal, Croatia. Um, it, it, again, it could be a a torrid old time for Steve Clark and these players if they don't get their act together and find a way of, of, of as, as both the captain and John McGinn have said earlier, about not slipping back into old ways and, and trying to get something from these games. Absolutely. Um, and, and listen, they they don't need to look too far back in the, dis the too distant past to look for an example of that, you know, you look at Spain coming to Hamden, not many people expected us to get anything for that game, and we go and beat them 2 nothing, and we're fairly comfortable because we put in a real good, you know, gritty performance, you know, dug in when we had to, um, you know, defended well, got a couple of big moments in the game, and Scott McTominay obviously was there in, in that game anyway to, to, to pop them home, and I think certainly... Um, looking at that and looking at what they, looking at what they did in that game that that got them to that result and try and replicate some of that because they have done it. They just need to try and find a way to do it again because you see at the end of the day to progress as a nation and, and to be better and to do anything in tournaments in particular, you need to find ways of getting results against these teams. It isn't going to be easy. That's that's the reality. <laughs> you know, you, you have to do it. Um, uh, by no means, are we the only, you know, national team in the world who are guilty of it? I mean, you know, England do it on a regular basis. Even with the quality they've got, they have this strange thing where they'll beat everybody they should beat, and then when they come up against the big guns, they struggle as well um, to find results. And but the difference is they're not getting absolutely hammered, whereas we are. So we need to try and right some of those wrongs and. And, and, and also, I think, you know what? Stop going into these games with the negative mentality of, well, you know, if we get something, we'll be happy. You know, almost accepting defeat before the, a ball's kicked. I'm not saying the players necessarily do that, but I think the fans do. Uh, and the players don't help it when they put in performances like tonight, to be fair. But, um, I was hoping initially, though. I think we're being a bit harsh. Like, the, like both the, the guys we've heard from in terms of the squad, we did start the game okay. It's just that tail end and... And maybe just as you say, not seeing games out or, or not being you know streetwise in, in terms of seeing games out. If we can just put, a, I know there's a lot of comments coming in about Rangers related um, parts of this show, and, and I want to just talk about John Suter because he comes on and 
it's just a hellish, hellish um, cameo from him uh, and one that he will want to just park rather quickly. If he can get started on Tuesday night and, and be part of something positive, then that might do him the world of good for Scotland because it seems like that since it's been a long time since that goal against Denmark. Well, I mean, yeah, it has it definitely has been, or it certainly feels like it. I think um, the night, yeah, he didn't didn't really cover himself from glory at all. Uh, I said before we come on, I think the first goal, I can or the or well, the second goal they they scored, but the first goal that was conceded when he was in the pitch, I I, I give him a slight buy on, and as much as I do think Ryan Porteous is is, is more to blame than Suter with it, because I think. Porteous is ball watching. He's not tucked in towards the front post where he should be because if he if he's there, you know we said it before we came on. If he's there, then he, he you know he stops that cross basically at source, so um, it doesn't get the opportunity to be turned in. Um, but there was no hiding place for 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 Big Soapy when it comes to the the other two. He's he's just he, for whatever reason he looked half a yard off it. I, I do question Steve Clark. Because I don't know why he felt the need to play John Suter tonight. I, I I wouldn't have played him at all because this is a guy who has, has played a lot of game time recently for Rangers. Um, mainly because he's had to because we've had the injuries and all that. And when he said to be playing, you know, every three days the last few weeks, clearly he needed a bit more of a rest than than what he got. Obviously, I suppose some people would say, well, we didn't play. On, on Sunday there because the game was called off so he's had that extra few days but I would have just had I held off until Tuesday before I played him I wouldn't have brought him on and in, in that atmosphere today unfortunately he did and he, he did let himself down a bit um, in, in that aspect but as you say you know um, hopefully he does get the nod on Tuesday um, we'll see a bit a bit better for him and he can be part of a um, a, a positive result but uh, as much as his performance was poor I, I do think Stevie Clark got that one wrong Okay let's quickly turn our attention to another game tonight it's got a bit of interest for, for a couple of reasons really Hungary uh, took on Turkey at the Puskas Arena 1-0 win for them uh, Subic's lie from the, from the penalty spot however uh, Ridvan Yilmaz carted off injured after just 27 minutes um, that's really really concerning from a club point of view for us uh, as Rangers supporters here, because he has become uh, an absolute stalwart at left back, so much so that Borda Barisic is on his way out, um, finally, um, and people are not so bothered because this young man's been absolutely incredible. Yeah, well, exactly. It's a huge blow for us. We can only only hope and pray that it's maybe not so, too serious and that... Uh, you know, he won't be out for, for long. Um, I think, obviously, the first thing to do is get him back in a plane, back to Govan, um, you know, and, and let our physios and our medical team have a look at him and and see, um, you know, what is what the prognosis is and hope that it's, it's bright. I think we really want to be having him back for, for that Celtic game. That that's a concern if he's missing that because right now we're unclear whether Dujon Sterling's going to be fit enough to play in that game. Um, and Borla Barisic, I'm afraid, you know, I don't want us to have to be playing him um, in that game because he's had two old firm games this season, Borla Barisic, and he has absolutely, you know, he's, he's looked like a fish out of water in both. Um, and I just don't know if he's got that in him just now. So yeah, it's it's a concern without without question. Um, and again, you know, you have to question the, the Turkey manager there. You know, um, and not just that. Did we, you know, did we have to send Ridvan on international duty, knowing the injury problems that we've got, knowing that Borma Barisic is on his way out the door, and knowing how pivotal he's going to be for us uh, for the remainder of the season if we're going to go and lift this title? I'm not so sure we had to let him go. I think we could have just put our foot down and said, look, sorry, but this one you're going to have to sit out because this we, we can't take the chances here. I think he was, a, he, was a, he was a late call up as well, I believe. I don't think he was a, a first pick. I think he was called up late. So, listen, it's yeah. one we'll, we'll be sweating on until we get the 
the prognosis back. I think it's actually Philippe Clement's birthday today, so um, that's not going to be good news for him on, on his big day. Um, Okie dokie. As I say, we will be back on Tuesday to do build-up and reaction uh, from the Northern Ireland game. There is going to be a podcast tomorrow. If you join Martin and the guys, they're going to be talking all things Rangers. So you'll get a Rangers fix over the weekend. Keep your notifications on for that one. Certainly Sunday as well, a cracking special hosted by Davey uh, Galazzo. If you're into your football Italia back in the 90s, uh, the panel are going to be up discussing their favourite 11 uh, and just really reminiscing about the good old days with James Richardson and his big paper and his week special. So do look forward to that. If you joined us in the comments tonight, great. It's been good to have you. The numbers have been really, really good for this one. So I have enjoyed it. Connor, great to have you as well. Um, I hope you have a, a smashing weekend of it, mate. Uh, and as I say, we're back on Tuesday night uh, and we'll see you then for all things uh, international related. Cheers.